Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 10th of November. These are office hours for Asia. Today's topics, Google Summer of Code 2024 preparation, contributor spotlight, version documentation, LTS 22.426.1, and final comments on Hacktoberfest 2023. And then a concluding item on update CLI that if we've got time, we'll get to, we'll need to limit ourselves, I think today to 30 minutes or less. So we'll, we'll try to be prompt. Chris, anything else you want to be sure we add to the list? No. Okay. All right. So here's what, here's what I've got. Sir, first, sincere apologies that I missed the meeting. It was on my personal calendar. I forgot to put it on my business calendar and didn't even look okay. at it. Yeah. <laughs> So here are some ideas. One of the things that were some of the things we discussed in that meeting were project ideas. And here are some that came to my mind, Chris. So maybe you and I could spend some time here discussing these as possibilities. Okay. So plug in health score, additional probes. These are uh, ideas from Adrian. Uh, and we can see the probe list later. I think I think it's a reasonable one. I'm just not sure which specific probe, but I think there are more probes to be done there. Yeah. Okay. Then the we're getting some we're seeing some additional traction. Bruno Verachten is doing some experiments, and we've seen others on open rewrite. Uh, it's yep. sort of the same as the same kind of idea as what Basel has suggested on plugin build metadata updates. And I've actually done some experimenting with it as well. And so we might benefit by having a GSOC participant write more recipes or improve the existing recipes, make them better, et cetera. Okay. Have you, have you had any experience looking at the Jenkins recipes for open rewrite? Not yet. Okay, I so didn't. what... I've been impressed with, with some of the changes. Bruno just took me through a tour today where he used one of the rewrite recipes to replace, successfully replace PowerMock with Makito. And so it was a non-trivial replacement. Yeah. Then plugin installation manager tool improvements is an idea that had been there last time. And I'm, I'm not as interested in that one as I am, for instance, in this one here. I'm going to put it above it. Bearer token authentication for the Git plugin and the Git client plugin. So there is some, uh, it's a new, new authentication technique uh, that we've had a, a few requests for it. Okay. Then we've, ha we've had the REST API specification generator up as a possible for a number of years. I'm less enthused about that one than this next one, which is we've got a tool that generates, here I'll show it to you, it generates Jenkins.io documentation for extensions. And unfortunately, or for, fortunately, it depends on how you view it. The extensions index that's here is steadily getting smaller and smaller because every time a plugin enables incrementals, it drops off this list. Oh, okay. So, so what we need is we need a re-implementation of this tool. For example, there should be a line here for the extension points defined in the Git plugin, but there isn't. And what we really need is a, re, a rewrite of this tool. The, the idea is do a rewrite that's much, much smarter than this, this tool was. This tool is very heavyweight and Jesse Glick has suggested some techniques that will make it much lighter weight. So that one is one that is interesting to mark. Okay. Because we're currently broken and it might be one we implement with student help during the prep period for GSOC. I, that I don't know. I'm not sure when we do it, but it's this one is interesting to mark. The tool is currently broken, right? Then there's, there's a, 
a project inside CDF called the CD Events Project and generating or extending the existing Cloud Events plugin to do CD events could be a very attractive project. Yeah. And last one I had was open telemetry. So this is one that the infra team is looking for, wants to do, wants to perform deeper monitoring of job, specific jobs on ci.jenkins.io and infra.ci.jenkins.io, et cetera. Any comments from you on any of those particularly? No, I think they're all good ones. Okay, good, all right. Now, what would you like me to do in terms of, of do, you, do you want these placed into some Google document? How would you like them hosted, et cetera? Oh, uh, I think there's a Google Doc for it, like Elite um, prepared, but do you have the link for it? Uh, I don't know if I do. So, oh, wait a sec, but you say, was this one that Alyssa Tong had created? Who's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So, so Mark, insert those ideas into the Google Doc that Alyssa Tong has shared. And I'll, I'll double check that if that I've got it. Yep. Good. All right. Very good. Anything else, any summary that you want to share of the session that happened earlier, that happened, I guess, about 12 hours ago on yeah. GSOC ideas? Um, I think uh, one thing is we, we need project ideas, but um, I have contributed a few. So it's like together viewers. And the existing ones, we we should have enough for like a good um, application to Google. Good. All right. So, with ideas from Chris and Mark, we've probably got we have a good start. Yep. For application to Google. Good. Now, when is the when is the application to Google due? I think it's, I didn't, I don't remember it, but they just sent an email about it yesterday. So uh, we should have received it too. So maybe, okay. you can, but because I don't know when the organ means, but I can forward that one to you. Great. Super. Yeah. We have, we have some time to prepare, to prepare our application and project ideas. Now, and I think that you have done the, you've already started the process on the Jenkins.io site for GSOC 2024. Is that right? I have, yes. Okay. Oh, so here we go. All right. So we've got project ideas from, very good. Okay. So if I want to just insert something into the draft project ideas, I could, I could do that by pull request to Jenkins.io. I don't even have yeah, I to. Think, I, think, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. So let me make myself a note there. Uh, pull requests to Jenkins.io for the for draft project ideas. And let's put it there as the location. Very good. All right. Anything else that we, you wanted to be sure we discuss around Google Summer of Code? Mm, I think we have to develop the ideas, like the details, uh, mm -hmm. for, um, before we can um, like look for mentors for each project. Good. All right. Seek mentors as the ideas are developing. Very good. All right. Yeah, this one, for instance, uh, open rewrite recipes, I wondered if we might persuade, persuade Steve Hill or Rahul of uh, 
of Netflix to to help with it. And this one, we may ask, we actually could consider asking Jagruti, our uh, student um, from last year. As a comment on. Yeah, so Adrian certainly, uh, Mark, Jagruti, etc. Yeah. This one is clearly me. And then this one is also me. Yeah. And we could there, we could consider Rishab. Um, who are some others? Some of the others, other previous GSOC mentors or GSOC participants. We've yeah. now had three, uh, three or more years of GSOC um, projects on the Git plugin. So we might be able to get those. Good. All right. Very good. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Um, no. It looks good to me. Great. All right. Next topic I had was Contributor Spotlight. Um, do you want to share what you're observing there, what you've seen so far? Um, actually, I have no idea what, what, what's going on with it. I just, like, last I checked, uh, I think I opened the check of Infra team, and that's, that's like, the last time. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was some updates back and forth. But on that, I... I think it's still in progress, I guess, because like, the stories haven't been uploaded yet, uh, previously. Okay, and so the my understanding from Kevin in Docs Office Hours Europe earlier today was that they've Infra team has put it into their work for for the next week, for okay. so for the next seven days. Okay. Now the infra team has been somewhat disrupted between health challenges and household moves and whatnot. So I'm not sure they're going to squeeze it in, in the next seven days, but I would expect uh, next seven to 14 days, it seems likely. Yeah. Good. And I assume you're okay with the idea of contributors.jenkins.io in parallel to stories.jenkins.io? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. Good. All right. I think that's it for what I had there. Any other questions or topics on Contributor Spotlight, Chris? No. Okay. So version documentation. Anything you want to share there on how Vandit's work is going? That one, we were still working on the blog. So it was like, we have to fix uh, the, uh, the author info for the blog pages. Okay. So I think, I think that's being fixed. Good, good, all right. So now is it, let's see. So if I look, is it likely visible on the prototype? No, the prototype is just oh, yeah. user documentation, right? I think, I think it's like you can, try to to navigate to uh, maybe Jenkins stocks and then not not node but um blog okay so let's go to blog that's like right. this I'm not sure that's right so no no not this one uh maybe not even Jenkins stocks ah okay so let's try that so let's go here like this maybe this, this, I mean, blog. this says blog yeah. no it doesn't work so it's, it's not ready yet Okay, so not to, not yet yeah. visible on the preview site. Yeah, because like we, we probably um yeah the thing is that I told him to um like but maybe I didn't tell him in a way that he he would understand. It. I told him to set up so that we can have a, a blog hosted as well. But um that was like in passing, so it was, it was a while back. So I'll I'll mention it again. Great. All right. And now I know that Bandit had set a personal goal to try to complete the work before the holidays in India. Um, I'm I'm unaware when I'm, is when is Diwali in India? Is that not sure? Okay, so November twelfth. Okay, got it there. 
Yeah, so it's like uh, doing. So he wants to get more done doing in the holidays. Right. Oh, okay. Great. So Diwali begins November 12th. Okay. So it's coming very soon. Yep. All right. Anything else there? I think it may take more than one month to do it because like we have we still have a lot of outstanding items. So you may not be ready by the end of November. Right. Yeah. Certainly understood. It's a major project. Congratulations on your work there. Okay, and thanks. and thanks to Vandit on his work. Yeah. Anything else on version documentation? Um Well, not much for now, but except uh, we'll need to prepare some documentation for like how to use it. That's one part we haven't done yet. Okay. So this is how to contribute to the site? Yeah, how to maintain the site, how to contribute to the site. Good. All right. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay, next topic then was 2.426.1, upcoming release on November 15. So the change log and upgrade guide has been proposed by Kevin Martins and merged. And so now it's, it's actually merged and in line. Unfortunately, we can't see it there, but if you're okay with it, I'll show it here from a prototype site. Is that all right if we look at it together? Sure. Just run. So Kevin and I have been through enough iterations on it that I felt comfortable merging it into the main line. Okay. So if we look now at change log dash stable, uh, whoops. There we go. Okay, so mm -hmm. so in the usual pattern, it has changes since the baseline. These mm -hmm. are the things that have been backported, including today's backport of the update of the Snake YAML plugin. And then changes since the previous LTS. And these security fixes were both already included in 2.414. No, they were included in a, yeah, they were included in 2.414.3. Interesting. And included, included in a weekly after 4.26. Okay. So, so. Hence, they're listed here. Prototype is gone. CentOS 7 is no longer supported. Yeah. <clears throat> and et cetera, et cetera. A whole bunch of uh, System 5 initialization scripts have been cleaned up out of the, uh, the System D installer. Yeah. It's actually, I'm quite impressed with how much has come into this release. And my testing so far has been very positive. OK. The release checklist is progressing and I'm feeling actually pretty good about it. So thanks to your work on helping make this checklist so easy to use. Okay. Any questions or comments on that LTS? No. Okay, next topic then was Hacktoberfest. And here we're pleased that in, in the month, we had over a thousand pull requests, and of those, four hundred over four hundred were Hacktoberfest pull requests, and over eighty-one, over eighty submitters, with three over three hundred and fifty of them validated, either being marked accepted or merged, and sixty-eight submitters. Now, what we see is about a thirty percent decrease compared to past years. 
And yeah. that's roughly the same as seen by other projects. So other projects in the CDF reported a similar amount. And my observation was the lower spam rate's been worth it. It's great. Yep. Any, anything you want to observe there? Mm. I'm thinking like um we have we have less like percentage decrease in the number of total PR submitted, but um yeah, but maybe just some people just don't don't want to bother with active with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I can see like uh, the uh, the percentage PRs for active with us decrease by about thirty percent, but um the number of PRs created on the whole has decreased by only 15%. Yeah, good point. So in this case, maybe it's small, that smaller reduction in total pull request may indicate more involvement from the community. Um, offsetting the smaller Oktoberfest contributions from new arrivals yeah good all right okay. anything else no okay so last topic and we we're almost out of time so let's let's hold with last topic here there was a pull request merged that bruno verachton had proposed a change to do tracking of the recommended version for the choosing a Jenkins version page and, and several others. So if we look at this page, just a minute here, I'll show you what, what I mean. So for developers of and maintainers of plugins, they have to choose which Jenkins version they should set as their required minimum Jenkins version. And this page generates its its values based on the current LTS versions. So you'll see here 387.3 and 401.3 and 414.3. And what Bruno has done is automated this with um, update CLI to replace yeah. the Ruby script we were using before. And so here we've got, in fact, this one just, just changed last week or two weeks ago, this number was 2.361.1 and it's yep. now moved forward to 2.361.2. Okay. So one of the one of the worries I had was will this correctly update now that it's sort of switched its method? The reason, Chris, I think it matters to you is this is changing the technique we're using. Here it used to use a templated source file. So if we look at the source file from improve this page, what you'll see is, let's see, let's look for release. No, let's look for, yeah. So here it is numeric. Now I'm gonna cancel these changes and we're gonna go back in history and look at it previously. So see what this one was here, for instance, oh, that didn't help me. Sorry, Chris. Let's look at it this way. Nope. Okay. I want to see. Yeah, this document. So here. No. Well, maybe I've maybe I'm not going to be able to show it in the time we have, Chris. Okay. No worries. What there is is there is. Oh, here it is. Good. This marker text, like placeholder, oldest LTS placeholder oldest weekly has now been replaced by the literal version. So the file on disk or the file in the repository now actually includes a specific version number here. Okay. We think that makes it easier for the version documentation project because if this file's on a branch and your version and it's being versioned, now the version will stay constant until it's revised by the tool, but for old for old releases, for old versions, version branches, it keeps its constant nature and doesn't have to be generated with a Ruby script. Okay. Yeah. Does does that see? I mean, and cur currently, if I understand correctly, 
you're not doing version documentation for the developer doc. So this one really isn't, isn't an issue for, for the version project immediately, but the concept makes sense to me. Okay. I might need to uh, follow up on this one too for the like um retooling project. Okay. To um, accommodate for this. Maybe maybe we don't need to, but just just in case we don't check it. Great. Well, and that's that's I think that's the right approach. The the site continues to evolve and version documentation. We can be sure this this is still behaving well with the version site. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Anything else, Chris? No. All right. Thanks for your time. I'll go ahead and end the recording and we'll make the recording available in 24 to 48 hours. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. See you, Mark. See you, Chris.